Welcome, guys. I hope you still have some room in your brains. Uh, it's not too late. Okay, a little bit. Very good. Um, Matthias and I want to talk about uh, impact-driven business line Obeya. That's a concept uh, we and a small group of other smart people introduced in an Austrian digital bank a few years ago. And uh, before we start, let's shortly introduce ourselves. My name is Alex Bock. I work as a freelancer. Uh, in the areas of uh, strategy transformation and project management, supporting organizations uh, to execute their strategy and their projects. Uh, in my former role within this bank, uh, I was leading the transformation office together with Matthias, and I was responsible for project execution. And uh, this is Matthias. Yeah, I'm Matthias. I come from an IT background. I've been doing Scrum Master and Agile coaching for roughly 12 years now. I am passionate about collaboration and co-creation. And um, as Alex mentioned already, um, in my former role at the digital bank, I was leading the transformation office with him. And I was responsible for the company's way of working and collaboration. And together as leads, we developed, implemented, and improved on, on the already existing OBEA concept with the twist of uh, making it really impact-based. Uh, we would like to show you how we, how we went through this journey. And uh, we're gonna like to, we would like to invite you to ask the questions at the end. So let's jump right into it. So what is an Obeya and why do companies choose to use an Obeya? So Obeya, the word, means big room in Japanese. Uh, don't challenge me on this. I read it on the internet, so it must be true. Uh, it, comes from <laughs> lean <laughs> it comes from lean manufacturing. Uh, you can imagine it like the mission control or the, or the ship's bridge, where all the information comes together and you can make decisions. It's based around a simple idea that um, you dedicate space and time and, uh, for, for exchanging information and making these important decisions. There, this is a, really a tool that, um, that enables cross-functional collaboration. And uh, I would like to emphasize that it's a combination of the physical room, uh, which might have changed a little bit now with corona, but really uh, a physical room where you have the information and the series of events where people really get together in this room, exchange, make decisions, and, and uh, track their work. There are a few key concepts which I would like to, to pick out, uh, not to grind through how you really do an obey with all the principles, but the key concepts that I have seen very valuable and key for, for making this really a nice collaboration tool. The first thing is that it's a very visual tool. It's, it's really there to visualize the status of the organization or, or specific KPIs. So I think we had this rule of thumb that if you have to look at something there and take more than two seconds to understand this is a good thing or a bad thing, then that's wrong. So it, it's really there to show you where to focus on, uh, which, uh, which parts of the organizations might be struggling, which are, which are doing well. It's also a standalone tool. So the idea is not that you go there, do a little bit of reporting, but you should have everyone in the room, all the information in the room to really make progress. So this is very important. And the visualization itself is much, much more than having some nicely colored KPIs. It's really putting information in context, seeing that how one KPI is, is related to your strategy or how your strategy is implemented with the current actions that you have. And Having this visually, especially those that are that are visually uh, receptive, um, we we can we can really put this into context. And if an obeya room is structured well, and we'll we'll get to a structure in just a moment, it really guides you through the discussion as well. So imagine you walk into a room, and instead of having to turn to to one whiteboard for some information and another one for another information, you just take your left hand, walk around the room. And whatever comes along your hand, that is the agenda. That's, that's the normal flow of the discussion. So it can help you in that way as well. Another point uh, which I mentioned already is really looking at data. It's not about having, uh, as, I like, as I love this ex uh, example, watermelon, is this now a green or a red, uh, red assumption of, of a state of a project. You're really looking at data. You're really looking at KPIs. No data, no decision was actually one of, the, one of the sentences that was said several times. And the Nobea is really helping you to focus. There's going to be a lot of information. I mean, the, the images that you see on the right, these are just examples, but <laughs> imagine trying to depict a whole company in a room. There's going to be a lot of information. And the sense of the Obeya is that you really focus on those few vital points that you have to address now, that you have to talk about now. Um, and this third finding 
the root problems. So, as I said, it's coming from lean management, so it's very important that, that we, we keep this mindset in mind and, and the, the lean values in mind. And while you have here a holistic view, really end-to-end -end idly, with the right combination of people, it's not, it's not about I have a problem, who's going to take it, but really you have everyone in the room, you can really find the root cause and fix those problems. Um, there's a little bit more nuance than that, but I hope this gives you an idea how, wh what are the key points of an Obea room. And uh, if you live this, uh, live this well, then there are definitely some benefits that you can, you can expect. So because everyone's in the same room, you don't have to, and by everyone I don't literally mean the whole company, <laughs> but let's say all parts of the organization are represented, all different views are represented. You don't have to repeat the discussions. It's not like, oh, we forgot to include marketing, so let's go to them. They bring in another point, and then you have to do another round. No, it's, it's one discussion, and whatever you agreed is going to be there on the wall. So no, no repetition. There's much less chance that you're going to lose information or information is going to be corrupted at handovers, or saying between product development and, and op business operations, because you are in the same room, you're looking at the same data. So if there's a misunderstanding, you will probably much faster clarify that or at least realize that. And that's, that's the next point, the implicit assumptions. When you see a person thinking and acting in a context and you see what they are basing their decisions on, because you're looking at the same KPIs uh, on the wall, and it doesn't make sense the way they are thinking or they are acting, you can immediately challenge that and figure out what is the implicit assumption that they have, which might be wrong or, or a missing context that you are lacking. Um, so it enables also reaching decisions faster, reaching consensus faster, because you have this shared context. And last but not least, this is actually one of my favorite. You're gonna be uh, seeing very different people interacting in this setting. Some are gonna be much more senior leaders than others. And just by them watching each other, bringing in different mindsets, because a, a leader in marketing is probably going to be thinking about problem solving very differently than someone with an IT background, they can learn from each other a lot. On the same level, peer-to-peer, -peer, but also in different levels of seniority. So uh, that, that's actually one of, one of my favorite benefits that I, for me personally. Okay, so this is the high-level concept. Uh, I would like to have a quick show of hands. Who has ever heard of an obeya with this meaning and has seen it already in action? Okay, so you guys are gonna challenge us at the end of, about things that we said, great. Uh, for everyone else, I hope, uh, I hope the pace is correct. Uh, so let's take a look at the typical setup of an obeya. Yes, uh, following uh, the obeya principles and benefits, uh, every obeya uh, is unique for every company and also all the obeyers within one company are different uh, by itself. Um, there can be multiple uh, stand-ups or types of sessions uh, in one uh, obeyer, but all follow the same purposes. Uh, speed of communication and decision-making, cross-functional view, not only thinking my silo, um, and uh, of course the, uh, to build the commitment to the company's uh, strategy path. Um, when we look at the uh, OBEA setup, there are several walls, each with uh, specific information. Um, and uh, to start on the left-hand side, uh, the, the strategy wall, and what you see here is uh, are some key elements that we request, uh, suggest for every company, but they can, uh, of course, be different uh, based on the company's uh, purpose and, bi and business. Uh, but these key elements uh, make sense in every company. So the strategy wall on the left-hand side gives you an overview on the strategy and OKRs of the company, um, which is a very powerful wall when it comes to uh, decision-making uh, and prioritizing on other walls. You can always check back if the actions you are going to take are the right ones with regards to your strategy. Then on the performance wall, uh, you see how the, uh, the company is currently doing, what is the health of the organization. Uh, you can find uh, KPIs from financials uh, over business operations, uh, over customer development uh, to the people happiness, whatever uh, is necessary for, for the company uh, to reach their targets. Then you have the project and program wall, uh, sometimes seen as portfolio wall, uh, where you have an overview on the running and upcoming projects uh, that needs uh, to be executed. Uh, you have the status of each of these projects uh, and also the red lights and impediments that need to be fixed to get back on track again. 
Uh, for us as a bank, it was uh, necessary to also have a risk wall uh, with uh, the overview of all the, the uh, running and upcoming risks, the due dates, mitigating actions, and who is the owner of, the, of all these risks. And uh, last but not least, the action and impediments wall, uh, very powerful prior or uh, throughout the session, people can raise their hot topics that needs to be discussed and decided on uh, on this wall, and of course also the impediments that needs to be uh, picked up by someone of the of the uh, members in this room, in this session. Um, these are just the key elements, as I said, but there can be many more, like a communication wall, a regulatory wall, whatever is important for the company. Good, let's have a look at uh, the, uh, the organizational structure we had at the time to really understand uh, where we are going. Uh, we had one board, one C-level board, uh, directly linked and in charge of uh, specific parts of the organization. Um, they were sitting physically in one room with uh, uh, their own scrum board and their own dailies. Uh, and then from right to left, we had the product delivery. Uh, you all know it's from the Spotify model, tribes, uh, squads, and chapters responsible for a certain product or process. Then you have the business operations, uh, also uh, broken down into various circles responsible for different channels. The uh, service uh, agent uh, was sitting right next to the operations guy to together uh, solve the upcoming requests from the customer. And the supporting functions like HR legal risk, uh, supporting uh, the whole organization with their expertise. Um, all these teams were working agile uh, with their methods and tools that fit best for their daily activities. Um, and uh, the, uh, when it comes to, this, uh, to uh, target setting, uh, the board was breaking down all these targets for the different parts of the organization. There was a bottom-up and top-down approach. Uh, and there was, of course, an alignment between the different layers of the organization, but not continuously. So once a year, the targets are set, uh, challenged against the strategy and against the other layers of the organization, uh, but uh, not on a regular basis. Good, let's have a look at the OBS and routines we had by then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I don't want to repeat how the, how the setup was, but in the tribes, we did have our tribe OBEA, which was really focused around the product. And it was a, it was a strong routine. There was twice a week uh, a meeting where people, usually product owners and the tribe lead, were, were gathering there. Uh, one of the meetings was also including a marketplace where people from all around the organization could raise their requests towards this, uh, these squads. And uh, twice a week, there was really a check-in. Okay, how are we doing? How are our business KPIs looking? Um, do we have any impediments also in the, in the Scrum context for the, for the squads? Um, the second, second aspect was business operations had their own OBEA. They were focusing on the different channels, and they were keeping in mind uh, how, they can, how they can keep, of course, the customers happy, how they can, they can sell the products, and how they can take care of uh, basic infrastructure like, I don't know, the telephone uh, interfaces, uh, sorry, the telephone infrastructure, which was, of course, very relevant. Um, the, the supporting functions, they did have their own boards, some, some of them Scrum board, Kanban board, um, but they didn't really have an OBEA setup. It was really more focused on, on the tasks that they were doing. They had regular meetings with their respective C-levels. Um, but as, as you see, it wasn't, there was no cross-cutting communication strongly established yet. There were, of course, overarching uh, uh, rituals as well. Uh, well. Let me start with the cross-tribe stand-up. So this was where the tribe leads really got together and they made sure that they were, they were supporting each other so especially, uh, especially let's say, in, in vacation time, where one of the squads would have been without a tester, then, then they, could, they could start this discussion. Um, but what was also very important that, first of all, they have proactively already invited the head of the business operation so that they, they could create some cross-functional alignment here already. And also, this was in preparation of the country OBEA stand-up the, the next morning so that uh, when they were walking up to the to the OBS stand-up and talking to the board, they already came with problem statement and most cases suggested solutions, uh, which was of course then aligned across the tribes. Once a week, we also had a country OBS stand-up within the room, which we'll, which we'll talk about in a second, where there was really the boards were, the, all the board members were there or the tribe leads were there, um, business operations was represented and some key um, supporting functions were, were also there. Yeah. Are the different OBEA rooms or different meetings in the same room? 
these were different Obeya rooms. Thank you for the question. So, so, so let's say, I mean, we're talking about the bank, right? So there was like the mortgage product group. They had around mortgage, the product KPIs in one room. There was another one for, I don't know, credits. And then there was one for operations and one for the whole country. Thank you for the question. Yes, um, I tried to signal that with the <laughs> my frames. Thanks for the question. And of course, um, there was a dedicated session for the board themselves, where after the Obeya stand-up, they had time to really go into detail about challenging problems, um, get all the, all the key players, tribe leads, team members, product owners, whoever was necessary into that discussion and go into a detailed, detailed solution finding. But I would like to point out that this was actually very well rhythm. I don't know if you say that in English. Uh, so one of the tribe stand-ups was Tuesday afternoon. The cross drive stand-up was Tuesday evening. The country obey stand-up was Wednesday morning. The board stand-up, or, well, I mean, I'm not talking now about their, their scrum stand-up, which was, of course, a more regular basis, but this extensive session was Wednesday afternoon. And the second tribe stand-up was Thursday. So that means that maximum within a week, but ideally within a few days, you could take a problem from the team level, from a single person, all the way up to the CEO, and all the way down having the discussion. So it was a very efficient cascade. But um, let's, see, um, let's see how the OBEA looked from the content point of view. Yes, uh, so we already showed you the general setup of an OBEA with the different walls like strategy, performance, etc. Um, when it comes to content, uh, they are different, uh, but the key elements stay the same. So uh, all these obeyers have an imp in box and an, an imped impediment box. So uh, prior throughout the meeting, uh, hot topics can be raised, impediments can be raised. So these were addressed during the session. Um, then when it, when it comes to KPIs, to the performance of uh, the, the organization, in our case, country obeyers, is the, the whole company's obeyer. Uh, we had several KPIs, uh, how the different tribes are performing, how the overall company is performing, how the operations is performing, and also the people happiness of the whole company. Um, and then the action box uh, on epic level, meaning initiatives uh, with a duration from three to 12 months. Uh, how, what are the, the, the big epics from each of these tribes uh, and what is the general project portfolio uh, of the bank? And as we had uh, the whole management team in these sessions, uh, we were able to cover all parts of the organization, all products, all processes, and can address uh, the impediments and actions directly to the owner. Good, when we look one way down uh, on the tribe, uh, OBEA, we have a similar uh, set of KPIs. The data is the same, but with different uh, granularity. So uh, for uh, one tribe, we have KPIs, uh, product-driven KPIs, IT-related KPIs, and the people only for this uh, tribe, so for this product-related group. Uh, the actions and impediments follow the same logic as I already explained. And um, this was working really good for us. Uh, the routines were uh, in place, and we were pretty happy with that. Uh, but we wanted more. <laughs> yeah, so... There's always room for improvement, as we said, and um, I would like to quote a colleague uh, without name, uh, which I think this quote really summarized up the, uh, summarizes well the opportunity that we have seen. So the sentence went something like this, that if the tribe lead reaches her growth goals, product growth goals, then I will fail my SLA goals. What can I do? So let, let, me, let me point out that uh, there was a very collaborative culture in the company, so it wasn't like territory of wars or, or anything behind this. This was a serious, genuine concern. And I have heard two different things between, uh, behind this. One of them was that the collaboration will be impeded with the mechanic that we currently have in place, and collateral damage will happen. This was the expectation. And the second thing was also that this lead, even though she was and still is an experienced lead, uh, she didn't feel the capability to solve this problem on her own. And of course, we we looked into this, we talked to people, we, we lived in the organization as transformation office, and we realized, of course, this is not an isolated conflict, right? Different roles, different parts of the organization all around collide along their targets, and, and this is also really company-wide. So it was a, a systematic challenge that we had to do, that we had to deal with, and we had to, we had to solve it also then company-wide. Just to pick out a few examples so it's not that abstract, 
Now, one of the classic ones would be risk management versus product. While product wants to grow, of course, as fast as they can, but sometimes risk has a different responsibility to keep the risk or the risk costs in, in at bay. And you have to find a balance between them. And if you have different targets, these are just simply concurring targets. The second aspect is this also happened on a personal level when one person was sitting in a squad in a chapter, let's say a tester, and they got some targets through the chapter specifically for testing while they got their product targets from, from the squad. And suddenly at the end of the year, a person could end up in the situation, do I now work with my squad for the product or do I now work with my chapter for, for, the, for those targets? And that's not a nice place to be. So, we, we had very mature leaders, please keep this in mind. Um, this was in a very collaborative mindset, and these leaders were really listening to the organization. So a few things were already in motion which we could build upon. One of them was that the tribes were already discussed, the tribe leads and the sea level were already discussing how to align the tribe setup to really match the product strategy. And the second thing was that the head of operations was, or a business operations was already in the talks with C-Level with us, how we could change operations from being channel focused to really product focused, which of course was, it was a great wave to ride. Um, and we wanted to pin down a few points that were really important for us how to tackle this, this uh, opportunity. I don't want to call it a problem because it was really just taking the next step of improvement. So we wanted mutual awareness, mutual awareness and commitment of the goals. And what this means is not just okay, at the end of the year or start of the year, you have seen a PowerPoint presentation, but really that everyone in the organization who were part of one interaction chain, let me go with this risk versus product example, they knew the goals of the others and they also committed to the goals of the others. So that means we wanted that risk people understand the product growth goals and they commit to them so they enable it. And the other way around, the product people were of course still responsible helping managing the risk. The second thing is we wanted constant visibility about this because, as we said, we agreed on this, challenged it at the beginning of the year, but 12 months is a long time. We wanted continuous visibility about this. And this was very important because uh, this would make, make the reaction time so much, so much more smaller. And third thing, we wanted proactive communication not only about the current state, but about the planned actions. So if a product planned a marketing campaign, let's say three months from now, they needed to tell this to operation so that operation had time or at least could raise their hands like, you're going to kill us. We're not going to be able to answer the phones if this goes off. And this was, these were the three, three guidelines that we really set for ourselves to, to do this. So as they say in Viennese, durch reden kommen die Leute zusammen. So through talking, do people come together? It really was about facilitating this discussion. And we came up with a, oops, I think I went one too far. Uh, yeah, we wanted to create a few concepts with which we could facilitate this discussion with the leads uh, riding on these, on these two waves. So let's see what we did. Uh, first of all, we wanted to start talking about business lines. We didn't want to talk about specific products and product development. We really wanted to see the whole chain. So we. We did get people into the room, and um, when I mean everyone, I almost literally mean everyone in this case who was in that product. So we really had marketing, risk, legal, product development, operations in one room, and we painted the picture. Can, can you see the slides still? Okay. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was really about what are the different steps of the flow? What are the different tools we're using? What are the problems we're facing? And this exercise alone was such a revelation because suddenly people started to understand what others have been talking about for months, why they didn't solve a problem they felt so burning because what is behind all this prioritization discussion? It increased the, the shared vocabulary by so much because now I had a much better understanding when someone says, what is churn of our customers? What are you even talking about? I knew exactly which part of the flow you're talking about. So this exercise alone was, was a very necessary and a great start. And of course, this is a schematic now based on how complex or streamlined the products were. They looked very different. But uh, it, it was the foundation we could build this on the customer journey. And as a next step, we, were started, we started to talk about KPIs. 
what do you mean really when you measure customer churn? Which are the points? And it was also a very, very funny situation because you literally had a board next to you and you could walk up and say, I'm measuring between this point and that point. There was no more ambiguity. Why are you measuring it was also coming up. Why are you measuring between those two points and not other points? So the shared understanding grew by the second. This, I think, uh, was a two, three hour workshop, roughly, for, for one tribe. And it was, I think, one of the best investments that, uh, that we did uh, time to effort. Okay. Uh, another thing that we wanted to do is, of course, we didn't want it to just do this once and then go on our merry ways because people will forget. We wanted to keep this alive. So we, we changed how we were tracking KPIs. Uh, not necessarily the math behind it because that was already very well established, but if you look at the simplified KPI, you see what is the historical data and where's the year-end target. Okay, it has to reach exactly that point. We changed that to have a corridor. Uh, I mean, if, if I'm looking at it as a positive KPI where you want to go up, you have a minimum that you have to hit to reach the year-end goal. But you usually have a maximum as well. Let's, let's stick with the, the original example. Product wants to grow maybe as fast as they can, but operations can only grow that fast. And this is a cross-functional discussion that you have to have. And now, suddenly, it's black and white, black and white on the paper, how quickly we can go. And, and this discussion happened now explicitly. So this, uh, this corridor helped us so much more than the precision landing we were hoping for before. The second aspect that we did was, we of course did forecasting about the KPIs. We looked at how it looked last year, if there's gonna be Christmas season or something, something like that coming up. Uh, that's, that's nothing brand new. What we, was really interesting twist that we did is we asked that, the f especially product development, that they show what are the impacts, the estimated impacts of their actions. If they, let, let, if they planned a marketing campaign, they could show here, yes, I think my customer base is going to suddenly grow in that month by so much. Uh, so, so we could immediately see what is the impact, but it wasn't only that for that one KPI, but because the room was cross-functionally set up, people could challenge like, okay, does, what does that mean for my operations SLA? Am I still there? What is the collateral damage? And this was one of the most interesting learnings uh, on, on my journey to understand business was everything's a trade-off. If at simplest you are trading money for customers, right, or money for product development. But in most cases, it's much more complex than that. You have one driving KPI, and then you have one, two, three others that you're collateral damaging or benefiting maybe. And that discussion could now happen explicitly. And that was a very valuable thing, because with the combination of the corridors, with the combination of these future impacts, we could suddenly see are we going to be survive actually what we planned? Or are we planning for failure? Or is this actually going into the right direction? Or maybe we want to do this marketing campaign, but before we do that, we have to do some more automation in operations so they can cope with the additional load. That discussion could now happen. And on, a, on another note, we also started then, then keeping this tracked on our actions. So, I took the here as a simplified epic card, right? When your product development is doing something, we noted this down. It was on the board. We expect that from the 1st of May, we're going to have 5% more customer income on, or website traffic or whatever. And also the negative things. And not just in the future, but actually, we keep these cards until those dates came. And we check, did, we really, did that really happen? Or are we just dreaming now because we are optimistic? And this was actually also enabling this validated learning. Are we ma making that impact, or are we just coming up with dreams, hallucinating, and then hoping for the best? So that was, that was a very important change. And um, this, one, this one setup enabled us to have a much more educated, much more mature discussion about priorities, why we are prioritizing different things because of the impact. It could help us then also validate these learnings. So, I hope this, uh, this concept explanation was clear. And let's, now, let's uh, go over to Alex now, who's going to tell us now how the new company, Obea, setup looked after these, the, uh, these concepts. So we took the new business line concept uh, into our Obeas and rebuilt them totally. Uh, uh, here you see one of the last pictures, not really a picture, of course, uh, how the company uh, Obea, so the overall company Obea, 
uh, looked like, and we called it company heat map. Um, you see the different product lines, the business lines as lines, and uh, the enablers and the different aspects as columns. Uh, so you have the full end-to-end -end view of a certain product uh, on one line. Let's take uh, the mortgage, uh, mortgage example. Um, you're starting with the risk-related KPIs, what, uh, from risk perspective, is impacting your mortgage product. Uh, then you have the margin and sales uh, KPIs, uh, how many accounts you have opened or closed, uh, what is the customer development in general, uh, and the business operations performance, so how, how is the operations dealing with this product on these certain channels. Then the legal and SLA perspective, uh, what uh, regulations might impact your, uh, your product, and the people happiness uh, in the end of, the, of, of this line. Uh, we colored the frames to immediately give you an impression uh, how the KPI is doing. So uh, if the frame is gray, it means everything is on track. We do, we do not need to talk about it. It's clear. If it's green, then we are, we are performing better than expected, so uh, up uh, out of, outside of, of our co corridor. So let's shortly uh, celebrate the success, uh, but let's uh, stick with our red ones, uh, where we are aiming outside of the corridor uh, going down. So we need to take some actions here. Um, and uh, you see small cards uh, on, on the right-hand side of the KPIs. These are either action cards or impediment cards. So if there is an impediment, it is placed right next to the affected KPI. And if there are some actions, uh, the Epic card that uh, we've seen before, um, they can, of course, uh, impact various KPIs, but they are placed right next to the driving KPI. And the combination of the colored frames and uh, the spread of the, of the cards gives you good overview where the, uh, the focus and also the investment of the business line currently lies. Good. Um, so yeah, let's, the let's go way, right? one step down. Exactly. Yes. So we also, we also changed the original tribe obeyers to business line obeyers. So we really wanted it to incorporate the product end-to-end. So, as you can see, uh, we, we incorporated the customer journey, but we also reused the KPIs that we had in one line in the country obeya. Of course, the granularity was once again more detailed, but there were actually repetitions. And this was intentional, because in the country obeya, the sea level was talking to the tribe leads, while in the tribe obeya, the tribe leads were talking to the product owners, the product owners to the teams. So this, this actu what this actually meant is that you could take a developer and the CEO and put them next to one of these KPIs and they both know what they were talking about, which I think was a, was a really great effort uh, that could help ease communication a lot. Here you can also see um, that uh, we, we, we mapped the actions um, on a more detailed level, also based on the time, um, um, sorry, <laughs> mapped, mapped them to the sprints. Um, but what was also very important because the boards changed themselves, but also the crowd changed. We did include business operations regularly, twice a week, into our business line stand-ups. Because also operations was now focusing on the different products. Um, and we also had here regulars, right? Uh, as Alex mentioned, risk, um, especially at mortgages, for example, could be some uh, could be players that make sense to be there really once a week or even twice a week. For marketing, it might be on demand. Maybe if you are planning a campaign, they are there until we set up the campaign, until the campaign is running, and then at the end of the celebration, for the celebration. But it really became an end-to-end -end view and an end-to-end -end discussion. So a lot of topics didn't even escalate up all the way to the country of Bea because we could catch them here. Let me point out that we did not get rid of the business operations of AI. Because uh, despite, because despite uh, that business operations was included here, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, get rid of that because there were still overarching topics, basic infrastructure, which was very relevant for operations. I guess this was our time, wa time warning. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we were really happy. There was great collaboration going on. Uh, it was a nice, colorful board. Everyone could understand each other. And then Corona came. Yeah, as the pandemic hit us and everybody was working from home from one day to the other, we were also, uh, we wanted to keep our available uh, obeyers, of course. So, we were forced to take some actions here. So, we decided to build all our obeyers on digital platforms. 
using Jira, Confluence, and Power BI, which brought us additional benefits uh, because uh, we made the strategy transparent for all the people, on demand, every time. They can look it up, and uh, th this uh, brings you commitment and awareness uh, of all the employees to the company's uh, strategy path. Um, additionally, uh, we uh, have semi-automated data, uh, which reduces uh, the effort of manually replacing any cards in a room. And um, additionally, as we made it uh, transparent and visible for all the employees, uh, the bar barrier of stepping into a physical room to get the information I need was, uh, of course, going down. And uh, yeah, this worked really well. So let's sum it let's up, sum Matej. It up. Yes. Yeah. So. As you can see, this was really an enterprise exercise, right? So everyone in the company was one way or another uh, somehow influenced by it, and, and uh, we created a lot of benefits. I would like to just quickly go through them, the ones that I, um, are my favorite. So one of them was we moved away from the squeaky wheel kind of prioritization, right? Who has the biggest title, who yells the loudest? Because we did have this end-to-end -end view, we could talk about impact, and we could, uh, we could really talk about what are we focusing on. So it was really a collaborative effort. The second thing is because of the forecasting, because of the corridors and these con ongoing discussions also about commitments, we were, could move out from firefighting mode. We've seen if three months from now something's going to go wrong. Of course, there's always some uncertainty, but, th but the ratio really, really went down. So we did have controlled fires when we said, okay, we are going to sacrifice our SLA for a marketing campaign, just to stick with this example. But it was controlled, it was communicated, there was no panic. And third, um, which, which was one of my favorites again, is that the mentality has changed because we involved the supporting functions, operations and product development into one room. All these experts were there. They could remove the enemy images. It wasn't the crazy product people that want to blow up my risk KPIs and the crazy risk people who are blocking us. It, were, it was changing from these you cannot let, <laughs> you shall not pass mentality to really Sherpas who were experts leading through you, f leading you through legal challenges or risk challenges to get your product vision on the market. So this was really, really a fun exercise, and, and I, I think it was it was very valuable for the company. It was definitely giving some, getting some great feedback. So we loved creating it, and uh, if we can inspire you and help your companies build this, then we're happy for the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you.